thing I'm most excited about tonight? What do you got? Is this movie trivia game. Um, Alyssa Milano? That's oh, right! Holy oh, shit! Oh, 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 oh. That is correct. Yeah. Wow! Matthew Broderick. No! Try Senator Stott. Try Senator Oh no! no. Try Senator Stott! Why would I do so? Did he drop the board? Oh, no. Board, 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 board. board. It is all time. Mark this Ellis. is heated. <laughs> Uh, Neil Jokovic. <laughs> <laughs> Very close. That's the famous Stallone mug. I want to know if you do yourself the honor of maybe like kind of marrying me. <laughs> that blue fairy thing screw, screw Yeah. Me. Watch Pinocchio. It's the blue fairy guy. Uh, Whoa. Wow. We just went explicit. Wow. Arlov is upset. Dude. Yeah. Don't even look me in the eye. He's he's upset about that blue fairy. He's red in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Harlov. <laughs> that blue fairy sucks my balls. I uh, I got the right answer. How many, How many points? points? I did not bet enough points. What? JT is I win? the winner! I'm a, I'm a firm believer in trial and error. And I believe my client is on trial. It's in error. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Riley is your winner. Advancing to the next round. <laughs> this is a destruction. <laughs> Jute has no points left, and Mark Riley is the winner. All right, Riley, Damn. you won the entire Ultimate Shimoda, and you get to go. Peace out, Mother S. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Shmoda! 40 competitors going at it. Who's going to be the last person standing? Five competitors will start at the table. People who have the lowest amount of points on the desk will be eliminated, and then new competitors will enter. We're you never know who's coming down the ramp next. You guys can be there to watch it all go down in downtown LA. Give it up for John Humphrey, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Wow, Irwin has not missed head to head to head to head to figure out who is the ultimate champion here. This is something special. Baby Carrots Ellis, you know, Ken, our dream as adults is one day be the announcers for a minor league baseball team. Today, we have two, I don't want to call them minor leaguers, but I know this, they're about to step up to the majors. What the word you're looking for is prospect, prospect, Mark. These are prospects, some who've got a taste of action, some who are making their debut, but all, all competitors fresh to the inner geekdom division here today. That's right, Winston Marshall, not exactly fresh to the schmodown. You guys have probably seen him compete in he the team. Fresh, though. Division. He is very, very, he's the very definition of fresh. Uh, in anarchy, he was thrown together with Stacey Howard, and they competed very well against the Founding Fathers. But I think Winston looked at the landscape of the Schmodown. He looked at 
having a teammate, and he said, you know what? I was backstage at a live event. I watched the inner geekdom happen. I think I'm throwing my hat in that ring. How do you think he fares? Well, you know, there's something to be said about realizing, yeah, you got friends, you got teammates, but you want to step up and do it yourself. It's like when you get to the second hour of Top Golf and you're you're lining up and you're like, this is all me. It's not <laughs> it's, about my friends. <laughs> it's not about Josh Bakuga coaching you no. anymore, though we may need it. So now yeah. you look at the other side of the ledger. You look at the challenger in today's match, mm -hmm. a young lady who has never competed in the Schmodown until right now, and that is Emily Rose Jacobson. She knows a hell of a lot about the inner geekdom. She has some strengths, maybe some weaknesses on that wheel, too. She's going up against somebody who knows a lot about the inner geekdom and definitely can talk some trash. You know, here's the thing. Emily Rose Jacobson, which sounds like a, a great character in some kind of graphic novel. <laughs> like, it just really does. Like, she's going to solve some problems there. Uh, she's a rising personality in the geek community. She knows her stuff, but then you've got to bring that, the knowledge, into the schmodown and see if you can compete with the fires burning around you and Winston across from you in the crowd, RB3 staring at you from behind the camera. It's intimidating, <laughs> but I, I have a lot of uh, faith in her ability uh, and, and her knowledge, so this is going to be a great matchup. Yeah, you look at the landscape of the Inner Geekdom division right now. You have your Mount Rushmore, and then you have a lot of contenders chopping at the bit to get chiseled right alongside them. And now we take a look at the pre-interview for today's match. Well, my confidence level for my first ever Inner Geekdom match going in, I'm feeling probably about at a, a strong seven. I've been really practicing this week and I've had a great trainer, my cute boyfriend, Adam Plavik, really helping me prep for this. And I'm just really filled with excitement at this point. So yeah, we're cresting on that nice seven right now. I'm, I'm by myself. So the thing is, I can't have Eric or Stacy carry me anymore, all right? Now it's time for me to get out here and talk a lot of shit. I'm feeling really, really strong, and I know that throughout these next couple of weeks and months, I'm just gonna keep studying, keep re-watching films, and really just rise in the ranks in the inner geekdom. I really only know like five things. Pixar, Disney, MCU, something about Batman, Ninja Turtles, that's about it. Definitely Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and the MCU. Still working on that DCU, Marvel, and DC, but those main three, that's what I've got. I'm not here for a belt. Who needs a belt? I'm wearing joggers. I don't need a belt. I'm just here to get in your head. Well, yesterday I ended up slamming my toe against the vacuum cleaner, and so I've got a bandage, I've got it splinted. The pain will inspire my competition today. <laughs> If I get exposed, I get exposed, man. It is what it is. But I'll tell you this, don't let me get on a run because I will dance the entire match. It's a whole different Winston, dog. Y'all don't even know about this yet. You know what? We're both amazing and awesome geeks. And do you know what? May the best geek win. All right, well, Ken, you see there, Winston Marshall saying he doesn't necessarily need a belt in his future. He's just here to get inside his opponent's head. But his opponent today, Emily Rose Jacobson, now we saw from that interview, she clearly is good friends with Adam Halibak. She knows how to be coached. She knows how to learn. She knows how to prepare herself for a match like what we have today. Look, yeah, it looks like her and uh, Adam Halibak have gone out for a, a few raspberry phosphates. Leave and, uh, room for the Holy Ghost. And, and I think, uh, <laughs> I think, uh, Adam has a lot of experiences, and if he if he can give any kind of insight, it, it'd be valuable. But but this is about Emily striking out and making a name for herself today, and I think she's motivated. And Winston, you know, I love this guy. I once uh, at a Schmo live event, me and him alternated taking prom photos. Uh, we held each other for about an hour, <laughs> all, all for all the photos at the at the fan meet and greet. And I, I love this guy, but let's see if he can really step up today. All right, well, go to Ken's Facebook page for more on those images. But like we said, Ken, these two competitors are just one of many who are looking at that match and saying one day that's going to be me. Absolutely. The title is the goal. Yeah, unless you're Winston and you don't need belts, kind of like me at a buffet. <laughs> but I think he still wants the title. Well, let's move on to notable accomplishments. And I'm getting word from our producers that these competitors are about to have some notable accomplishments, but we don't necessarily have any yet. So, Ken, I'm just going to ask you, are you ready to do this thing today? Uh, yeah, you know, they've got some strengths. I'll tell you that. Little mini tail on the tape, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, MCU, friend. 
Emily Rose, MCU, DC, and ninja movies. Obscure, <laughs> obscure ninja movies for Winston. Surf ninjas might come up today. So I think now we're ready, Mark. We are ready, and that means it's time for the movie trivia showdown. <laughs> Handling the introduction duties today is the golden throat of Ken Knapsack. All right, I'll do my best. And introducing first. Making her Schmodown debut with a record of zero wins and zero losses. Looking to make her mark today, Emily the Rose Jacobson. Getting a Captain Marvel flare? That is, yeah, little Cap Stark Industries. I love Winterfell. I think they're going to take the throne. Um, that is in actually a reference to Tony Stark, who factors into the MCU okay. quite prominently. Never heard of him, but <laughs> her opponent, representing the world's finest, making his Schmodown inner geekdom debut. Winston Blackman Marshall! And here comes Where's Eric? Oh my god! There he is! Winston has appeared in glorious Dragon Ball Z fashion. Is that what that is? That is the character of Goku if Danny Fernandez's tutelage yeah. has served me well. He is indeed Goku who is a hero in the world of DBZ. Will Winston be the hero? Today, that he certainly has uh, multiple suds at his disposal. <laughs> the Rose only with a glass of water. Now, Emily, I noticed there was a bit of a limp as you got to your desk. Are you okay? Are you physically able to compete today? Uh, you know what? I'm in a little bit of pain, but I'm going to power through it. Uh, and I'm going to use... The inner geekdom has a history of competitors yeah. playing through the pain. <laughs> Winston, you look like you're on cloud nine, not a care in the world. Yeah, this is my Nimbus cloud right here. It's, uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. right. Four is his beverage of choice. We will get into the rules in round number one for the Inner Geekdom Division. Here's how it's going to work. It's the first of three rounds in today's match. You're going to hear ten questions from ten different corners of the Inner Geekdom galaxy. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. We're going to ask you a question from up here at the answer desk. Once you hear the question, simply write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard we have provided so kindly we gave you a magic marker as well. Now you write that down. Try to keep your penmanship legible because once we ask you by name to reveal your answer, please show that whiteboard to the camera and so we can see it at the same time you say it into the microphone. Now I'll remind each competitor that you have about 15 seconds to get that question answered. If you need to buy yourself some more time or you just need to think of the answer, you can use one of your three JTE rules, which you can use throughout the duration of the match. You also each have one challenge to use. Ken, I think I got all the rules you, out of the way. How that sound uh, It sounded great. The JTE rules named after the famed Ecuadorian scooter rider, Josh Tapia. <laughs> Winston, are you ready? Yeah, let's do this. The Rose, are you ready? Absolutely. Let's get ready to schmow down. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah, we rise to a finish. Ken Knapsack will be asking the first question. All right. The inner geekdom match. First question comes in the category of Star Trek. Star Trek. Uh, in the opening sequence of Star Trek Into Darkness, the crew is trying to stop what natural disaster from happening on planet Nibiru? I hear that on planet Nibiru, they are opening a Top Golf. Ah, uh, we should go. We should probably go. Ken and I, early investors in Top Early investors in Top Golf. Go to five, four, Three, two, one, pens down. Uh, Winston, your answer was? A volcano eruption? It That's was, correct. in fact, a volcano eruption with the illustration to accompany it. Uh, Did the rose Mass extinction. It was Ooh, not yeah. mass extinction, yep. although a volcano can contribute to that. Emily finds herself in an early 1-0 hole. Yo, thanks to real Winston. talk, I've never seen a Star Trek movie before, so that was... <laughs> I just, I just summoned all my key for that one. So again, what? Let's, I've seen that one twice. Right. Let's, let's hope the luck doesn't run out uh, early there. Winston, for Winston does not Marshall. know Star Trek, but he does know his history on the planet Nibiru. He does. <laughs> Your next question comes from the world of Middle Earth. This is Middle Earth. Could be Lord of the Rings, Hobbit movies, some appendices in there. If they were in the movies, your question is, 
What is the name of the character played by Hugo Weaving in the Middle Earth films? I don't know how long we've been doing this, but I like yeah. that we're calling it the Middle Earth films. Yeah, that makes some sense you there, know? yeah, yeah. Like Lord of the Rings, where we're trying to stretch it into six movies. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. The Rose, what do you have? Uh, Aeonder? I know it's close. It is uh, no. not Aeonder. Uh, no. Does Winston have it? If it makes you feel any better, I just wrote High Elf White Hair. That's, I mean, that's, no, yeah. no, oh, no. Almost. Almost. <laughs> That's his nickname in the streets. Y'all didn't know that. Y'all were using his government name. Yeah. That's his street name. That's true. His street uh, name. Elrond. 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 Oh, is the name Elrond. we were looking Lord for. Elrond. One nothing there. Going to the third question. Category is MCU, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Frank Grillo appears by which villain name in Captain America Civil War? The name of the character there. Mm-hmm. Looking for the character. I am a Frank Grillo supporter. He's Can you repeat the question? We got JT. one. We got one. Um, Frank Grillo appears by which villain name in Captain America Civil War? Anyway, back to my Frank Grillo praising. He's got cheekbones that I really envy. He's got good cheekbones. Like Guy clearly works out, takes yeah. centrum. Does so. Winston, a fumble. Looking for an answer. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Winston. Crossbones? That is correct for points. It is crossbones. Can the Rose get on the board? The I just did Winter Soldier, Armin Solo. Hey, it's still an answer, although it is incorrect. And so now Winston taking an early 2-0 advantage. And can we see so many times with rookies up on the desk under the white hot spotlight? You got to get that first point, and yep. then you start building some momentum. It, it's it's kind of like a stand-up comic needing to get that first laugh. I'd be waiting 10 years for that. <laughs> it's and right it's around the corner, happen. I promise you, but yeah. it may be in Chicago April 12th. Oh. Harry Potter is the next category. And in the world of Harry Potter, your question is, Helena Bonham Carter first appears as the villainous Bellatrix Lestrange in which Harry Potter film? That's a good question. That's a, that's a great character. She reminds me of every girl in high school I tried to date. Uh, uh, Bellatrix Lestrange or Helena Bonham Carter? Little column A, little column B. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we go to the Rose. Uh, the Goblet of Fire. It is not the Goblet of Fire. Does Winston it's have it? It's Order of the Phoenix. Damn it. Uh, it is Goblet of Phoenix. It, it is Order of the Phoenix. Phoenix. Yes. Order of the Phoenix. Yes. Uh, Winston also having think. Goblet of Fire. And we move on to the world of Marvel movies. And the question will be asked by Mr. Knapsack. All right. Fifth question. Category Marvel. Marvel in Venom. Who played Eddie's girlfriend, Anne? You ever see the Venom? I know, I know you don't make every movie. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen a movie since 2015. Oh, well, dude, hopefully your parents will release that embargo they have yeah. on their son's viewing habits. <laughs> Go to five, five four, four, three, three two. two. One, we are simpatico, and we go to Winston for the answer. I got nothing. He does not have it, does the Rose. I'm going to say a good actress. It is a she good actress. actress. <laughs> Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Hell yeah. The crowd, <laughs> so wanting the Rose to get on the board, they yeah. cheered for her answer. They did. A good actress. Need a little more specificity than that. The answer is Michelle Williams. Right. Yeah. That's from right. From Michelle Williams. That's right. So we move on to heroes and villains. Heroes and villains, and your question is, who plays former wet work agent Victoria Winslow? in 2010's Red. After I have dinner at Sizzler, I'm a wet work agent. <laughs> that is a very gross joke. And it I is. will not go down the rabbit hole. It is. I won't go to Sizzler. Had a burger there one time, never going I back. Can, I can change your mind. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, we go to the Rose. Uh, not Liv Tyler. It is not Liv it's Tyler. Not Liv, it's definitely not Liv Tyler. <laughs> Does Winston have it? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. I'll put the woman from Weeds, but that's not it at all. <laughs> good it show, yeah. but no. Nah. A very good show. The answer is Helen Mirren. The that's Helen Mirren. Helen, Helen in my Mirren. Brain. I just kept wanting to say Meryl Streep, but that's not right. It is not right. And uh. it feels like, it, as opposed to one competitor getting the other one's head, it feels like uh, our dear head writer, Chris Kaliski, is in both of their heads right now. <laughs> yes. it's, the answers are on the tip of their tongue, Ken. They can't quite muster it in time to get it on the whiteboard. The next question comes from what world? Uh, seventh category is DCEU. Uh, DCEU, a recent article on Playboy.com written by Mark Ellis, says that the DCU might eventually pass Marvel's MCU. They're playing the long game. Check it out on Playboy.com. <laughs> Drunk when I wrote it, Ken. Back to you. All right. The question is, who plays Mira in Aquaman? Okay, so I asked you about Venom. Yeah. I, I don't even need to bother asking you about Aquaman. No, I just rewatched season one of Game of Thrones. Okay. <laughs> That's a yeah. very healthy viewing habits you have yeah. there. Five, four, three, 
two, one. Pens down. We're going to go to Winston. I mean, we were just talking about this. Amber Heard. It is, in there fact, Amber Heard. Did the Rose have it? I said Catherine Tate. Oh! Gosh. We, everybody wants her to get the correct they answer do. They do. to get on the board. Now, Winston only with a 3-0 lead, so not taking full advantage. But we move on to the last three categories in round number one. And your next one is going to be in the world, the wild, wonderful world of a galaxy far, far away, Star Wars. Mm. Star Wars. We have some fans here today. And your question is, what is the name? of Ben Mendelsohn's character in Rogue One. Just need the last name. Just need the last name uh, here. I can't compete. Uh, you okay. are not allowed to compete, okay. but I will let you say the answer. Okay. And this one may have stumped them again. Man. Man, I'm not seeing a lot of activity. Winston uh, thinks he's got Pen something. Winston's working. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We go to Winston. What do you have? Can I have Ken answer it for me? Uh, you may not have Ken. This is not phone a friend. Diego Luna? It is not Diego Luna. <laughs> That's just another actor in the movie. Did the Rose have it? I just threw a smiley face with a thumbs up. Oh, <laughs> a smiley face. We, we were looking for director Orson Callen Krennic, or oh. Krennic would have been accepted that. He even Ken, got the middle name. This one, this one gone I would have got you a point. I would have <laughs> got you a point. I wouldn't have had the whole audience laugh at me. Yeah. That's, you know, no. That's also part of the fun. At least you right? answered, uh, you guessed with a, an actual actor from the film yeah. instead of a drawing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Draw it's work. No, it was it's a, a nice illustration. Three nothing lead here. Three nothing lead. This is looking like the most recent Super Bowl, but let us go on to number nine in the category of mixed bag, mixed bag. Lena Headey plays Queen Gorgo in which 2006 film? Need the title of that movie, Ken. Yeah. And um, he I thoroughly enjoyed the last Super Bowl. Uh, I know a lot of people didn't. Can right. you repeat the question again? We got a second repeat coming in. Uh, Lena Headey plays Queen Gorgo in which 2006 film? I enjoyed the nap I took in the middle of it. It was very it, good. It nap. wasn't the best game, I'll yeah. give you that. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We go to the Rose. Did you have it? Nope. She did not no, have it. Does like Winston for a 4-0 lead? I started to write Queen of the Damned, but that movie came out like way before. It would not have been Aaliyah starring in Queen of the Damned. It was, in fact, 300. 300. Oh. 300. 300. Oh, a right. numeral that we will not get close to in this match. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Was that shade? I'm sorry. I don't I, know. It's a derivative. I mean, we got three O. You need yeah. one more zero, dog. So, like, uh, you know. yeah, Winston has a point. So now we move on to your Patreon question. This is a Patreon question. It comes to you from our good friend Andy Schick. Give Andy a hand. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> for supporting this program. If you are not yet a supporter of the Movie Trivia Showdown on Patreon, check it out. Select which tier is right for you. Got a lot of live events coming up, a lot of articles, postcards you can check out. It's all at the Movie Trivia Showdown Patreon. So Andy Schick wanted a question in the category of DC movies. These are DC movies, not necessarily DCU. These could be any DC movies. And his question is, professional wrestler Robert Jeep Swenson played what DC villain in the year 1997. So not going to give you the movie, yeah, just give you the year. Great year. I had hair back that year. I've seen pictures from yeah. that year, and you looked fantastic. I had, I had long hair. Great alternative rock DJ, Ken yeah. Epson. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, we go to the Rose. Uh, was it Bane? It we was Bane. Board. She's on the board. And they, uh, they, they wrap up with, I would say, maybe the hardest question of the bunch with a <laughs> Patreon question. They end up, Winston got a point as well, so it is now four to one. And I feel like our kind barbs towards them maybe uh, goose them into getting some correct answers. Look, there. here's the thing. It's not about the score. It's about the win. And this is still a close game. Four to one is a great score. Sorry. Down three points going into round two. Emily's not in a bad spot. Winston's got to grab control of this game if he wants to take it home. Uh, and I think we're ready for round two. In round number two, here's how it works, competitors. Again, this is round two of three total rounds. This is known as the wheel round, the wheel of justice, doom, and both competitors' fates. You see that wheel right there? It's got ten slices on it from ten different corners of the inner geekdom galaxy, as well as your typical opponent's and spinner's choice. Each competitor gets a spin at the wheel. Whatever category you land on, you're going to have to answer five questions from that category. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, there is stealing available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, 
you can simply say, I want multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one point. If you don't like the category you spin, you are allowed another spin as long as it didn't land on the doomed opponent's choice. And I'd like to remind everybody that the wheel for today's match is a sponsored wheel from our Schmodown patron. Give a hand for Jeremy Hastings. <laughs> Jeremy Hastings sponsoring the wheel. His wheel sponsored slices that he likes are the DCEU and the MCU, Ken. So he's a big fan of current comic book films. Thank you, Jeremy, for your support of the Schmodown Patreon. So the Rose is on the board, Ken, yes. with one point to her name. Winston Marshall has four points, meaning, Winston, you have the option of either spinning that wheel right now or deferring to your opponent. Ladies first. All right. No. All, All right. right. Here comes the Rose right. again. Injury could and be a She's going to limp on over, and I, that shows her grit, her determination to get this. And look, she grabs a wheel from the wheel Good. just the way you want. Good. Good. Did Good. have to remind her about the peg situation. Yeah. And Six here it goes, in. round and round. Still got the same pegs. but uh, And I, we know that she likes what the Harry Potters, Harry maybe Potters, the Middle Earths. What's Middle it going to land on? It's that a good spin. It's still is going. A good spin. Ask the Star Wars. Is it going to be DCU? DCU. Do you want to one of Jeremy's slices? Keep that, or do you want to spin again? She's going to spin again. She's going to spin again. The spin is in. The spin is in. All right. There goes that wheel. Spinning round and around. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Ken, it may just be my uh, my 38-year-old eyes, but I have a feeling that that wheel ticker is getting a little tired. It is getting tired. <laughs> I, think, I, think it's, I think we're due for a Home Depot trip. Yep. And this All could be DC Jesus. movies. Oh, you don't oh, know. Oh, it's a oh, pilot's no, choice. It's a choice. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's Winston the fear when you spin away from the DCEU. So, Winston, what slice would you like to give? The Rose. Well, again, since Ken has completely destroyed this category, I'm going to give her Star Wars. Oh, wow. Okay. You've answered all of the questions, Ken. So it's going to be Star Wars <laughs> on the wheel. And Star Wars because is. Ken is such a Star Wars fan, I will allow myself to ask the Star Wars questions. <laughs> I'm kidding, Ken, please. Without further ado, you may all ask right. the Star Wars question. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, the Rose, you're going to get five questions in this round. Five questions in this round. Question number one. How many years after episode two did episode three take place? Multiple choice. A, two, B, three, C, five, D, ten. Three. That is correct, that is correct. We got a point, That's a point. We, got a point. we got a point. That is a point. All right, next question. In Return of the Jedi. My favorite movie. It is. Who points to R2-D2 uh, that if they fall out of the Ewoks net, it's a very long drop? C-3PO. That's correct for two points. We got a tie game. We have a tie ball game, Ken. Tie game. All right. Third question out of five. What kind of creatures do the Tusken Raiders ride? Uh, multiple choice. A, Minoc, B, Tauntaun, C, Bantha, D, Rancor. Uh, Bantha. That's correct for a point. She takes the lead. It's got to be a nice feeling to get the lead after lead. a very tough round one. She's starting to find her feet here in round two. Yes. Even though one of those feet is currently broken. <laughs> <laughs> um, fourth question. Fourth question. In The Empire Strikes Back, my favorite Star Wars film, which character exclaims, you're not actually going into an asteroid field upon learning of Han's risky plan? Leia. That's correct for two points. <laughs> it's a very good movie. I don't want to take anything That's away right. from Empire. Our princess, our general, Leia. All right, final question. Final question. Sticking with the... All right, all right final question yet. Um... I started to read a Star Trek question. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh-oh. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Bring that Trekky stuff in here. Oh. Yeah. Boo. Boo. As Jar Jar Binks said, settle, settle. <laughs> um, how long did Han Solo serve in the Imperial Academy before abandoning it to join Beckett's crew? Multiple choice. A, two years. B, three years. C, four years. D, five years. Two years? Incorrect. Possible steal. Three. 
That is correct for a steal. One That's a point steal. big steal from Winston, but uh, hats off to the Rose, who she, she spun Absolutely. opponent's choice. Winston saddled her <laughs> with Star Wars, and yet she managed to have quite a favorable round number two, despite that steal right there at the end. Which Love I was just going to ask, did y'all just like reset all the questions or whatever? <laughs> like, <laughs> Still a lot of things. Can't Still answer things. all the questions, so now we're back to square one. <laughs> Winston, it is now your turn to spin the wheel. Please spin from the wheel and not the peg. And you don't have to give it your best Goku spin because um, the wheel's feeling a little tired today. Oh, here we go. Oh, fuck. Worry about that one. Whew. Here we go, Ken. Winston, if he gets on a run here, he's going to have quite an advantage going into round number three. The potential for 10 points is out there right now. Yeah, he does need this here. Oh, but he could have spun opponent's choice, too. Oh, it's just an Oh, wow. Spin Star Trek. He's going to spin Star again. Spin again. Spin <laughs> again. Yeah, spinning away from Star Trek. <laughs> That would have been interesting, two opponent's choice. <laughs> the, only thing, the only thing Winston fears more than opponent's choice is the Star Trek way. <laughs> <laughs> so here well, it comes, and Ken, it could come back to haunt him again. Hopefully he hasn't tipped his hand. It's right Has there. he tipped his hand? It's no! right there. No! Is it gonna go? Harry Potter! <laughs> it goes to Harry Potter. Winston taking a few victory laps. Wow. That is quite a spin. Harry Potter. Look oh, at boy. Look at that. It, we, it was such high drama. MCU. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All so right. he's not able to will it all the way to the MCU, but he is going to settle into the wild world of Harry Potter. And Winston, your first of five questions here in the world of Harry Potter. When wizards cast the spell Expectro Patronum, the spell takes the form of an animal. What animal does Luna Lovegood's spell turn into? I have no idea if that's an easy or hard question. I, I don't. I do know time. Multiple choice. Down. And we're going to go to five. The, uh, multiple multiple choice. choice. Oh, excuse me. Your uh, <laughs> options are, is it A, a stag, B, a rabbit, C, a cat, or D, a horse? Pretty sure it's a cat. It is not a cat for a one-point steal. Rabbit. It Whoa, is, in fact, a rabbit. Look at that. All right. Damn. Your next question. <laughs> Your next question in the world of Harry Potter, Winston. In the Harry Potter franchise, there are three unforgivable curses. What is the name of the curse that inflicts excruciating pain on the recipient torturing them? <sighs> I... If I mispronounce it, I'm not going to get it right. Uh, we're a little lenient on the pronunciation. <sighs> it's like, just give me the multiple choice, because <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like septum something. But yeah. give me a, multiple choice. Avada Kedavra. No. D, Reducto Curse. No. C, Imperious Curse. No. Or D, Cruciatus Curse. Oh, see, I know the, sp oh, shit. I know the words. It's like spectrum. Repeat the, the answers one more time. That's going to be uh, JT Roy, I believe. Okay. Uh, is it A, Avada Kedavra, B, Reducto Curse, C, Imperious Curse, or D, Cruciatus Curse? Cruciatus Curse. Give him a point. Yeah. It's a point. But it's, it's, like, it's, it's like septum, sept, sept. You're thinking of the wrong spell. Uh, am I? Is the invocation. Ah. Uh... Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Off camera, getting some <laughs> oh, yeah. advice uh -huh. on that question that was just asked, so no rules infringement. Your next question, Winston. This is your third one. In Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, who plays Down to Earth Witch and former Auror Tina Goldstein? Multiple choice. Is it A, Catherine Waterston, B, Gemma Arterton, C, Miranda Richardson, or D, Allison Sudol? A. It is A for a point. Catherine Waterston is the answer. He's hanging. He's hanging tough. Your penultimate question that could possibly give you the lead in round number two. In Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, how many points each were Harry, Ron, and Hermione deducted after being caught by Malfoy for wandering around after bed hours? I have a solid guess, but I'm going to say multiple choice. Is it A, 10 points, 
B, 15 points each, C, 25 points each, or D, 50 points each? C. It is not C. Does the Rose have it for a one-point steal? 15 points. You said correct. 15 B? Uh, it is actually 50. 50. 50. 50, 50, 50. points each. Right. I thought so, but I was like, that's way too high for bedtime, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Winston. Your last question. In the world of Harry Potter, in the Chamber of Secrets, what one word does Hermione write on the piece of paper Harry found in her hand after she had been petrified? Multiple choice. Is it A, basilisk, B, diary, C, myrtle, or D, pipes? A. It is not A for the steal and the two-point lead going into round three, the rose. Can I have a repeat? Is it of the question or is it just the answer? Just the answers. The answers I can give you for free. A, basilisk, B, diary, C, myrtle, or D, pipes? C, myrtle. That is incorrect. We're looking for D, pipes. Yeah. Oh, that's, right. where the, that's where the that's basilisk where the, is. And so, yeah. Ken, yeah. a very yeah. tough question. As far as my knowledge goes, the Star Wars ones, I knew some of those. The Harry Potter ones, I don't know how to read. Yep. <laughs> Regardless, it is now eight to seven, and we have us quite a competitive inner geek to match going into round number three. It's eight to seven. Emily the Rose Jacobson on top. A field goal could decide this one here. And, yeah, this is what we're talking about. you got to get to the finish line. The finish line is the win. It's not about the points. And, and Emily paced herself. She, she, she stayed in there. And as, it goes in the third round with the lead. So that's, that's what's important. But Winston, I think, has got it in him. He knows these answers. And this is the last round. This is the round that will decide the match. In round number three, each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers range from 1 to 16. So you give us your three number choices. They each correspond to a different category up here at the answer desk. The first question we ask you is worth two points. Your next question is worth three points. The last one, should we make it that far, is worth five points and will determine the match. So uh, Emily, the Rose Jacobson, you are in the lead. So you give us your three numbers first. What do you like? Uh, two, eight, and 14. Two, eight, and 14 are the numbers. And now Winston. 12, 10, and seven. 12, 10, and 7 for Winston. I'll be administering Winston's questions. Ken will handle the duties for Emily the Rose. Uh, Winston, we start with you. You have a one-point deficit, and you chose category 10? Tw uh, 12, 10, and then 7. 12, yeah. 12, 10. I love when competitors switch the orders of the numbers. <laughs> you switched 12. You, you chose number 12. And Winston, I'm not sure how you're going to feel about your category for two points. The question is, in the world of Star Trek movies. Oh, no. You know how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> your, your question is, for two points, which Star Trek franchise star directed Star Trek Insurrection? Patrick Stewart. Five, that is incorrect. Looking for Jonathan Frakes. Ah! Jonathan, Jonathan Frakes. Jonathan Frakes. He hosts a lot of like ghost hunting shows, I believe, too. I want to go ghost hunting. He with also, Jonathan yep. Frakes. So now we yeah. stick with Winston. Uh, Winston, this is now going to be your three-point question. It is from category number 10. You selected villains. Category of villains. And here is your question. In V for Vendetta... Who played the totalitarian leader, Chancellor Sutler? I very clearly have his face in my mind. Bald guy, goatee, fuck me. Uh, I'm going to go to five, four, three, two. Uh, multiple, uh, JTE. J you're going to use JTE rule? That's what I meant, JTE. Your JTE, question JTE, is, JTE. in V for Vendetta, who played the totalitarian leader, Chancellor Sutler? Ben Kingsley? Not Ben Kingsley, looking no. for John Hurt. Yep, John Hurt. John right. Hurt is the answer. And so now, Winston, it all comes down to this for you, my friend. The five point question. You chose the category of Ken, help me out. Star Wars, <laughs> nothing but Star Wars. <laughs> if they should buy wars, please let these Star Wars stay. <laughs> Will Winston stay on the desk? Will he force Emily the Rose Jacobson to answer a question, or will this be a TKO? It all comes down to this question. Winston, 
for five points in the world of Star Wars. Your question is, in Return of the Jedi, what type of ship ended up bringing down the Star Destroyer Executor? We go to five. JT. Last one. Uh, last one. one. In the film Return of the Jedi, what type of ship ended up bringing down the Star Destroyer Executor? It's got to take a shot, right? Uh, a Y Wing. And Joe Winner <laughs> with a final score of eight to seven. in there. We also would have accepted the front of a Cadillac. That's what was used for the crash scene. Yeah. Ken, what a match we had here today. The score is not going to indicate it, but this was a back and forth match. Emily the Rose Jacobson finding her feet in round number one as Winston surged to a lead. It was a tough round two for Winston, and then round three just could not get the categories he wanted. You got to stick the landing, and that's not what happened today for Winston, but he is such an energetic and charismatic competitor. I, I hope we haven't seen the last of him here. I hope he, he can pull himself up and, and, and dust, him, dust himself off and keep going. But Emily, what a debut coming in here. Yeah, she struggled early on, but like we kept saying, you got to hang in there. You got to dig deep. You got to hang tough like a new Kids on the Block song, and that's what she did. <laughs> she certainly had the right stuff, Ken. And now we are going to throw it to our post-game announcer, Emma Fife, who's going to have an interview with both the winner and the loser. Uh -oh. Take it away, Emma. Uh-oh. <laughs> What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Emma Fife, your Inner Geekdom League commissioner here with the victorious Miss Emily Rose Jacobson. Emily, congratulations on your win today. Thank you. Now, Emily, I know that you were putting uh, a lot of effort into preparing for this match. Were you surprised how you felt when you actually got out there on the desk under the lights? Uh, definitely, <laughs> the kind of the nerves definitely hit in that first round. I yeah. was just sitting there uh, really just picking my brain, yes. but as soon as I got that Bane question, exactly. that's when the tides turned. I was going to say, you got off to a slow start, but as you say, once, it, and, and as Mark was saying, once you get that one point, that kind of launches you on the trajectory of continuing to get points from there on out. Now, when you were given Star Wars in round two, because you did, unfortunately, spin opponent's choice, mm -hmm. how did you feel about that? I was actually kind of happy. I had forgotten to list Star Wars as one of my strengths. <laughs> and so um, I was more worried that it was going to be a lot more prequel, a lot more sure. side movie questions. But the fact I that mean, it was a lot of the original trilogy really played in my favor. And, you know, your fears were very well founded because we do literally have an entire Star Wars league. And I think there was some strategy in what Winston was doing and giving you Star Wars thinking, oh, we've asked every Star Wars question they could possibly ask. But turns out there's a lot of things you could ask about Star Wars. Apparently. No, yeah, I was very, I was very terrified when he said that while giving me the category. Yeah. Well, and, you know, you didn't actually even have to answer any questions in the final round there, though. Do you feel like because you'd gotten on such a roll after you say getting that one point and then performing quite well in round two that you could have continued that streak into round three? I think so, depending on the category. Uh, I definitely knew the answer to Winston's Star Trek question, so that was kind of giving me a little bit momentum in that, okay, cool, if I have to go into this third round, I'm feeling really good about it. Awesome. So I assume then that uh, you're not done with Inner Geekdom, and we'll see you back around these parts sometime soon. Indeed. I am not finished here. I'm going to keep on climbing my way towards the top. And next time answering more questions in round one. Yes. <laughs> I have the utmost confidence in your abilities, Emily. <laughs> uh, it was certainly a lot of fun watching that post-interview just now. And Emily, the Rose Jacobson, you cannot say enough about how exciting it is to have her and Winston, I would throw them in this category of worthy challengers to perhaps the eventual crown, or the better word would be belt. Belt is a thing there. Yeah, I think what, what I what I learned today here is that that uh, we sometimes the lights will shake you. Getting in the ring for the first time will shake you, um, but it's all about staying through to the end. And I think that's what Emily did today. You got to get those early punches. You got to absorb it, and then you can come back and answer some questions. That's exactly what we yep. saw with an eight to seven victory of Emily the Rose Jacobson over Winston Blackman Marshall. What a match it was. Had a pleasure calling it with you, Ken. I want to remind everybody out there not only to check out the Schmodown Patreon. 
but also our live events coming up March 23rd. It's the free for all right here in Los Angeles. You can get tickets at the schmodownlive.com and do not forget about Star Wars Celebration. Hey, we're going to be there. April 12th is going to be a fatal five way in the convention center. The winner of that will go on to April 13th live event at the Athenium Theater in downtown Chicago to face Alex Damon. You can also get tickets for my comedy show at markellislive.com, the schmodownlive.com. Go to the websites. Use the HTTP. Ken Napsock, where can the kids find you? You can find me at Ken Napsock across all social media platforms and hanging out with you all on the internet. That's Ken. I'm Mark for Christian Harloff. We'll see you all real soon around the movie trivia schmodown. Feeling good? Yeah. I mean, I think we just do what we do. Go out there. We keep calm. Yep. Like, talk to each other. Talk to each other. No exactly. reactions. Yep. You know? Just play it one round at a time. Always. And that's it. That's all we respect. do. Yep. And just breathe. Yeah. Chill. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Ah. Well, well, well. It's the Shire Wolves. Those are some really nice belts you got there. It'd be a pity if you were to lose them today. Which is, uh gonna happen. I'm terribly sorry, but uh, your championship is gonna have to be relinquished. Yeah, we, we, we've, we've done this so many times. I, just, I mean, two weeks ago I heard this from Kalinowski. Yeah, and, who's the and, boss? Yep, they, they said it too. Bateman I mean, loves oh to come in here yeah. and try and So we've heard things. this all mm -hmm. before. Yeah, you know, you know what we're not? We're not Bateman, and we're not Kalinowski, and we're not any of the other players. We are the players who will defeat you today. And we have the strength, we have the power, we have the brains, and uh, William, do you have anything to add? I am such a fan! Oh, oh. You guys are so cool! When you beat Kalinowski all those times, and when you beat Maven all those times, those guys are such jerks! You're so good! You're so good! What, what? Do you have anything else to add? Yes! Please, please, please take my picture. Take my picture, they're right here, it's good. Come what here. are you doing? They're nice, come on! Okay, listen, I'll take it myself. Okay, you guys, come on. Say oh. on me they rain! <laughs> undercard match there yeah. in the inner geekdom but now it is time for the championship the team championship that's right the challengers critically acclaimed William Bibiani and Whitney Seibold that's right they go up against the reigning champions themselves the Shire Wolves oh yeah people love the Shire Wolves as they should uh, Christian, why why do we compete? Why do we get in this competition I'm arena? I'm retired, Ken. Oh, why? In general, oh. we, the royal we, why? Why? I, because the answer is to win oh, gold. To win gold. To win gold. Thank you, you're right. Glory you're and right. gold to, uh, this is what this is all about, and I'm so excited to be here for this title match. It all comes to these kind of matches. Well, there's so much story here, for sure, because the funny thing is that you rewind, you know, on, on the first iteration of Inside Schmodown, you mm -hmm. had interviewed a very different, back then, William Bibiani, who very was a different. little bit more cocky, who was a little bit more arrogant, and he, he, he at that time, he said that he was going to win the singles tournament, he was going to win the team's tournament, he would have both championships, and when Critically Acclaimed debuted, everyone thought this was a team that was going to be unstoppable. They ran into late to the party, they, it, it was a mm -hmm. big bump in the road, we didn't really, out of the tournament they went, we didn't see them for a little bit, but the attitude got better, mm -hmm. and William Bibiani and Whitney st started to show, it's very similar to Bibiani's singles career, yeah. to where he had this big, oh, that Andreco match, and then JTE threw him off, and then what's gonna happen? He eventually gets himself to a number one contender match, and then he won the championship. Can he repeat himself here? Because critically acclaimed is four and one now, and all four of their wins by TKO. Uh, well, that's amazing. I, I didn't even know that stat. Uh, you know, Frankie Numbers didn't text me that like he texted you. But, you know, the story of William the Beast Bibiani is very interesting to me. This is a guy who came in heralded, uh, came in like this, and, and the team, the critically acclaimed forms, you think this is going to work. It's like my third marriage. It doesn't work, but you learn, and that's how I got my fourth marriage. Right. So that's what happens, and they have learned. I give William the Beast Bibiani a lot of credit 
for coming out of a valley and climbing back up to a peak. And the same can be said for Whitney Seibold as well, who's been playing very well. But here's the problem. The problem is that, yes, they are 4-1, and one, they have four knockouts, and they have a championship shot now. The problem is that they have to try to win the championship from the Shire Rules. And the, oh, Shire, yeah. the Shire Rules are one of, if not the best team that we have seen. They are 5-0. and oh. They have not lost. They are two former rookies of the year. They, you saw what Clark Wolf did last year in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Lost to Ethan Irwin, the former movie trivia showdown champion, in the finals by a word. Mm-hmm one word and she would have been playing for that championship she has played for a championship she took sam levine to the to sudden death rachel cushing has done the same thing they are legends in the league they are hall of fame players and they and now rachel cushing also coming off maybe the biggest win of her career and when she defeated mike kalinowski and arguably one of the best matches we've ever seen she is now the inner geekdom champion she is the first ever female uh, double belted champion she, as well as being the first person to ever be double belted with the inner geekdom championship so the these ladies are intimidating. They are some of the strongest players that we have ever seen in this game, and it is not going to be easy for critically acclaimed, but Shire Rules also want to make sure that they are chasing that Patriots record of six title defenses, or seven title defenses, excuse me, and now they are going for number two. Wow, yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, accomplishments, a lot of uh, a lot of great things you just said there, Christian. But you know what? I, it just comes back to me: talent, pure talent, and and how these two competitors, Clark and Rachel, how they have grown in the league. You know, a lot of people know Rachel and I were partners. But yeah, you much stabbed her in the back. I but, well, maybe that's from a certain point of view. But yeah. like, much like when my first five marriages ended, all four of those, five of those women, went, actually it was four. Right. There was a double marriage. They all went on to better things after. They all went on to bigger and better things and that's what Rachel has done for the shadow and the crumbled uh, shards of the nerds watch she's now one of the champions and Clark Wolf is one of the, the most intense competitors who comes to play game day is a thing with her you kind of like a pitcher in the fifth inning of a no hitter you just stay away and let her do her thing this is going to be a big match now as much as I want to hear about your future alimony I would love to now move over to hear from the players they have a lot to say here we go Yeah, we're back. I'm feeling good. Yeah, it's uh, the magic season, supposedly. I think it's time that we were a part of that season. Agreed. We've defended once, and we are very ready to defend again. Critically acclaimed, they are gaining their respect. Whitney and I have been a great team since the start. You and I started from humble beginnings, as many do. We are the smartest people in the whole league, and we got to show that today. We're, we really weren't humble at all. No, actually, we were really arrogant about it. We only had one loss, and that loss was by a razor-thin margin, and it was very high-scoring. It is our time to finally prove that we are the greatest team in the movie Trivia Schmodown. And you know what? I'm not going to squander it. You going to squander it? Nah. Critically Acclaimed is an incredible team. There's no denying that whatsoever. We've seen what they do. They're more than worthy competitors. Both of those guys have known William Viviani for a really long time. The dude's a walking encyclopedia. But that said, Rachel and I, I think, are confident players. They've got weaknesses. We're aware of them. We've done our homework. Um, and we are ready because we want to keep these belts. The Shire Wolves are formidable opponents. Several wins to their record. Uh, they've never lost. At least two or three wins then. I have wanted to play these two players since I started. The, they are the smartest, most capable, dramatic, cool, everything. I love them and there's no way to prove that you're really good at this unless you take on players like Rachel and Clark. We work so well as a team because we work together. It's a partnership, 50-50. The Fife Club coming together, having that unit for us in last season and last year was amazing. But now we can stand on our own. We've had other managers approach and the truth of the matter is we're we're in this together i think we've got each other we're rogue agents uh back to back and good luck to emma and to mark but uh right now it's you and me all the way yes their sense of style is top you know they're they're the top everything works well except for one thing those belts i had the singles belt last year that's right i did and it felt good 
feel really good. You know what goes with everything? That belt. But you know what? I want another belt. I've had the one belt. I want to try for a second, and there is no one I would rather wear a belt with than Whitney the Beauty Seibold. Oh, stop. No, Never. Keep going. You're keep beautiful. Going. Keep going. I love fine. you. Critically acclaimed, you've won a whole lot of matches by TKO. But that stops today. We're after a uh, record that uh, was set by the Patriots. You might have had your TKOs, but you've never played us. We're going to take the belts from you politely. Very nice. Gently. Yes. We're going to be nice about it. Very reasonable. But they're going to be on our wrists. And uh, possibly our shoulders if they don't fit. Hashtag belt belt. Hashtag belt belt. We're excited to see you out there, uh, but we're not going down lightly. These belts are going to be ours for a while. Look, look how we got here. By the way, big shout out to Eric, our editor, who's been cutting these amazing pr uh, promos. I mean, round of applause for Eric. The promos have just been insane. Check him out. Check him out over at his YouTube channel, Nerd Chronic. I mean, they've just been so good this season. So um, thank you, Eric. So Great. listen, as you see inside of those promos, this has been storied. We are getting to the fact of where these are to a team that was deemed to be champions, haven't gotten there yet, and then a team that has earned their right to be the champions, and they're now going to prove it. Uh, look, this is it all comes down to this. The proof is in the pudding. I love pudding. I love proof. It all collides yeah. here. All right, notable accomplishments. Here we go. Critically acclaimed. They have a former singles champion. They have four victories, and they also have four TKOs in all of their victories. And then the Shire Wolves. They have way too many Schmodown awards that I can even list. That's one notable accomplishment. They are both former rookies of the year. They are undefeated. They are the rookie team of the year, and they are the reigning champions with one defense. Their match against the who's the boss team of Mark Riley and Ben Bateman, one of the classics of all time. And now we are set to do battle. Ken Knapsack, are you ready? <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia. <laughs> Five rounds for the movie trivia showdown team championship of the world. Mm -hmm. Introducing first, with a record of four wins, one defeat, and four knockouts, ladies and gentlemen, the number one contenders, Whitney the Beauty Cyborg, the former movie trivia Schmona champion, William the Beast. Hi, I'm Leonard Malton. William Bibiani and Whitney Seibold are back with one of their famous entrances. Now, if you like what they did for Mystery Science Theater 3000 or Monsters, Inc., I think you're going to be disappointed this time around. I mean, I'm not one to judge. I just made a silly appearance in Gremlins 2. But I think you'll have to agree with me, this one is pretty much of a letdown. In fact, I'm giving it no stars. They survived the attack. Yeah. And I, I, I kind of agree with uh, oh. Leonard Malton's review. Oh, man, it's oh, there we go. All right. And their opponents. With a record of five wins, no defeats, they are the 2018 Rookie Team of the Year. 2018 Team of the Year, and the reigning, defending, undefeated, undisputed, movie trivia schmodown team champions of the world, Classy. What'd you think of our last match? Yeah, I saw it. Sucked as usual. I think you have really bad manners. Well, I think you dumb girls should stay out of a man's game. 
Where do you get off behaving like that? Hey, that's why they invented the internet. So ignorant idiots like me could anonymously say whatever they wanted to. I'm a hero. You should be thanking me. We think you should apologize. For what? Having a completely uninformed opinion and spewing my stupidity? You say you're sorry, or I'm gonna make you sorry. Oh, man. Oh, come on, I have the right to cowardly criticize people better than me. I bet you even called us didn't you? Of course I did. Damn, I hate being called Are you gonna apologize or what? No, YouTube is nothing without my hot takes. You! I don't think he's gonna apologize. No, I don't think so. For when they wow. won the titles, they had an amazing entrance when they defend them, and now, yep. once again, a great entrance for the champs. All right, All right. so our competitors are Water sitting down. Look at that. All the gold Rachel's got to put down there. Yeah, she's got to put one yeah. away. Um, so we are now going to go over the rules of round number one. The competitors are going to get eight questions in a various, various amounts of categories here. It can range from anything, Ken. Mm -hmm. And eight questions worth one point apiece. 15 seconds to answer the question. Don't forget about your JTE rules. Don't forget about your challenges. And with that, that's everything happening in round one, Ken. Absolutely. It's going to be exciting. I think we should get to it, sir. All right. So with that, I would have to ask first, the champions, are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. The challengers, are you ready? Oh, heck yeah. I think we're ready. Then let's get ready to schmoda. Here we go. All right. Question number one comes from the realm of comedies. Who stars as Jesse Montgomery alongside Sean William Scott in Dude, Where's My Car? I thought that was a documentary about JTE's life before his that's, car. That's Where's My Bird. Uh, ha, we're going to run that one into the ground like he Just did like, himself. Ah, five, four, three, two, one. Clark. Ashton Kutcher. Yes, it is. Ashton Kutcher. Yes, thank you. Ashton Kutcher. And Bibbs. Ashton Kutcher. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Question number two comes in the category of horror slash thriller. Horror slash thriller. What classic Halloween costume is six-year-old Michael Myers wearing when he commits his first murder in 1978's Halloween? Do you remember what you were wearing when you committed your first murder? <laughs> uh, Godzilla. <laughs> Five, right. four, three, two, one. Whitney Seibold. A clown. Yes, it is. Rachel. <laughs> A clown. Yep, Bibbs. A clown. And Clark. A clown. All right. Look at that. Punch for punch, Christian. We're starting. This is exactly what we thought we'd get. And now we get to question number three, dramas. Dramas. In the 2016 Best Picture winner, Spotlight, which major event in the United States forces the Boston Globe Spotlight team to put their investigation of sex abuse in the Catholic Church on hold? Feel the tension. Feel the Five, silence. four. Hello, friends. Three, two, one. Pence down, and Rachel. 9-11? That's correct. 9-11. Okay. Yes. That's correct. War in Iraq. Okay, Aww. and Bib, I mean, uh, Whitney. 9-11. Okay, so only right. Clark missed there. So 6-5, six, 6-5, five, six, yep. five, only one point down, and we get to our next question. Fourth question comes in the category of action slash adventure. Action adventure. Who plays Will Smith's girlfriend and eventual wife in Independence Day? I feel, I feel the energy. Uh, you know, it's like uh, tension and good five, competitive tension. Four. Three, two, one, Bibbs. Vivica Fox. Yes, and oh. Clark. Vivica A. Fox. Yes, Whitney. Vivica A. Fox. And Rachel. Vivica A. Fox. Got it. Okay. We'll get it. We're good. Clean sweep. Eight, seven. Okay. All right, next question here. Next question would be from Fantasy Sci-Fi. Fantasy Sci-Fi. 
who plays the villainous Thaddeus Valentine in 2018's Mortal Engines. Mm -hmm. All right. Some titters from the crowd there. Yeah. Right? So not, a, not a fan of 2018. No. Five, four, three, two, one. Clark? I don't have it. Didn't have it. Whitney? Hugo Weaving. Yes, That's Rachel? Right. Hugo Weaving. Yes, That's correct. Bibbs. Hugo Weaving. Hugo and that movie is good. All right. 10-8. 10-8. 10-8. Yes, ten, it eight. literally is. All right. Question six. Question six comes in the category of animated. Animated. What 1998 animated film features the songs Playing with the Big Boys, Deliver Us, and When You Believe? Uh, for $20 extra, I'll sing all three of those if you want. How about $20, $40 not to? Deal. Five. Four. Repeat. Okay, first one. Oh, what 1998 animated film features the songs Playing with the Big Boys, Deliver Us, and When You Believe? Did that, JT? Five. Work for him. Four. Three. Two. One. Whitney? Prince of Egypt. Yes, That's correct. Rachel? Prince of Egypt. Yes, you got it. Prince of Egypt. Yep, Prince got of Egypt. Everybody got it. All right. Everybody got it. Great. Look All right. at that. Wow. That was good. Wow. That was good. Here we go, guys. All right. Now I remember. Yeah. All right, here we go. Movie release dates. This is for number seven. Movie oh, release that's dates. Great. All right. Gangs of New York, Road to Perdition, and Men in Black 2. They all came out in which year? Mm-hmm. Feel it. I mean, how do you close, close yeah. game here. How well do you remember time? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Rachel. 2002. That's correct. Two thousand two. Yes. Two thousand three. Oh. Two thousand three. Oh. So, oh, so, so, so Rachel and Bibbs got it. They both have so far. They have not missed. Whitney missed that one. It is still 13, 11, two points here. But so here's what we do here on this one. If Rachel and Bibbs get this, they both have perfect rounds and we'll have to answer a bonus. All right, Ken, here we go. All right, this eighth and final question this round potentially is a Patreon question. Yay! <laughs> uh, the following question comes to you from Jeremiah Spivey. Thank you, Jeremiah, for your support. Patreon.com slash Modown is where you can support as well. The category is biopics, biopics. What former Taxi co-star played Andy Kaufman's manager, George Shapiro, in Man on the Moon? If you believe, Christian, if you believe, yeah. they put a man on the moon. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down and beast. Danny DeVito. That's yes. correct. Clark? Danny DeVito. Yep, Whitney. Time's sexiest man alive, Danny DeVito. <laughs> right. And Rachel. Danny DeVito. Perfect Great. round for yeah. Bibiani Perfect and round. Rachel. Thank you very much. This question is just for Bibiani and Rachel. Please use your whiteboards here, guys. Mm -hmm. So we are going to ask this question, and this is just for Bibbs and Rachel. Here we go. Who stars as a small town lawyer who must defend a man accusing of killing his wife's attacker in the 1959 classic drama, Autonomy of a Murder? Anatomy, Anatomy, Anatomy of a Murder. murder. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's, all right. it's been a long day. It's all right. A long day. I JT eat it, and I'm proud of it. Uh, Five, four, three. Screw you guys. Two. <laughs> one, and pens down. And Rachel. Jimmy Stewart. For the point. James Stewart. One point. Wow. Okay. Look at that. What a battle, Rachel. Rachel and Bibbs. And look, strong wow. rounds from both Clark and Whitney, and they're only two points away. 14 16. Ooh. Wow. Can you what tell? A, that it is, is a title fight, Woo. Christian. Unbelievable. Okay, so now we get to round number two. The competitors will switch up their seats, and round number two, the champions have decided to take opponent's choice and spinner's choice off of the wheel. They have the option to do that, and because of that, the competitors will spin. If they don't like what they get the first time, they can spin again. There are six questions in this round, two points apiece, unless you go to multiple choice, then it is one point. And remember, you can steal. Critically acclaimed has used one JTE rule, and the Strider Wolves have used none thus far. The wheel for today's match is sponsored by our Schmodown patron, Jeremy Hastings, on patreon.com slash Schmodown. Thank you so much. The sponsored wheel slices for today's matches are 2000s and comedy. Thank you, Jeremy. And a wheel slice for today's match was sponsored by one of our Schmodown patrons on patreon.com slash Schmodown. The sponsor wheel for today's match is Action Adventure. 
action right. adventure. If we land on that slice, we'll shout out that name. So now we have the challengers who are in the lead who have an opportunity to go either first or second. Uh, we'd like to go first, please. You'd like to go first. Okay, right. so please spin from the wheel, Bibbs. Uh, trying to take control there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, by the peg. Good. Really hard by the peg. There you go. <laughs> All right. Spin is in. The spin I also wanna... is in. All right, so they are looking. Where do we go? It's coming back around. Where's it going? Where are they going? Where are they going? The John Carpenter? Carp Carpenter. John John Carpenter. Carpenter. All right, Carpenter. They got Carpenter. Okay. Six questions coming your way in the category of John Carpenter. John Carpenter, critically claimed. Two points for a uh, straight answer, one point for multiple choice. Question one. Which rapper turned actor portrays dangerous criminal Desolation Williams in 2001's Ghosts of Mars? Ice Cube. That is correct. Ice Cube is the answer for two points there. All right, next question. Desolation. Carpenter's The Thing was released on the same day as what other legendary sci-fi film? E.T. The Extraterrestrial. Incorrect. Oh. Incorrect. For steel. No kidding. Blade Runner. That is correct. Wow. Two big steel. Oh. Steel. Two points. Oh. Yeah. All right. Big. Third, big. third question out of six. What popular video game series was inspired by the characters in Big Trouble in Little China? Yeah, Mortal Kombat. That is correct for two points. Right. Two wow. points. <laughs> Fourth question out of six. In what state does Starman crash land in Starman? Multiple choice, please. A, West Virginia. B, Florida. C, Wisconsin. D, Montana. Mm. Montana? Incorrect for steal. One point steal. Florida? Incorrect. Looking for Wisconsin. Ah, Wisconsin. Okay. So still four points Some here. Yeah. <laughs> Fifth no question. In Montana and West Virginia. Fifth question. Which actress portrays Holly in They Live? for an answer. Five, four, three. Uh, Meg Ward. Incorrect. Two points still opportunity oh. here. I don't, I don't have it. Meg All right. Foster. We're looking for Meg oh. Foster. Meg, Meg Foster. Foster. Meg Foster. Meg Foster. Yeah. But still a good Ron, round so far. Ron. Final question in this round. John Carpenter. Uh, sixth question. Amber Heard is institutionalized and becomes haunted by a ghost in 2010's The Ward. What is the name of the psychiatric hospital she is kept at? Wow. <laughs> that is a deep cut. We're going multiple choice on that. Really? really? That is a multiple choice question if I remember. All right. We, we didn't write them. A, a, North Bend. B, Smith's Grove. C, Cherry Lane. D, Eastern State. Five, four, three. East Bend. Incorrect for a one-point steal. Can we hear the choices again, please? A, North Bend, B, Smith's no, Grove, C, Bend, no. Cherry Lane, D, Eastern State. Okay. Wait, that's what they guessed. Oh, oh. <laughs> Five. Uh, four. Cherry Lane. Incorrect. Looking for North Bend. North uh, Bend. See, we actually... No, they, they, said, they, said, they said East Bend. Asked us to clarify because yeah. we would have yeah. given you an actual they one that was East given. But that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. All, right. All right. So here we go. So okay. So now, Jesus. Critic acclaimed is still in the lead. It is four points. Carpenter didn't work out they wanted to, but the champions now will spin. Clark Wolf walking to the wheel and will spin from the wheel and we will see what they let. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah. Oh my God! Oh, shot by the Clark Wolf. Mark Ellis just flinched somewhere wherever he is. Wow. We'll see. Unbelievable. And here we go, here we go, the round, they're looking for something strong because Carpenter didn't work out the way that they wanted to, but you never know what's going to pop up on the wheel for the champions, and here we go, oh, look at this, oh, mm -hmm. they came close to it, oh, wait a minute, oh, 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 oh. oh. spin it again, spin again, Clark Wolf is going to spin that wheel attack. right off of the, all right. Clark Wolf has had is, great luck so far with that yep. wheel, and they're looking for either horror. They might be looking for, look, after that performance with Kalinowski, you probably, comic book movies probably something they're looking for, too. After that spin, the Titanic wouldn't have hit the iceberg. <laughs> 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 and it's coming back around. It's coming back around. What's it going to hit? Looks like biopics, Ken. Uh, it looks like. No, nope. 2000s. Okay. 
2000. All right, 2000s. I will be asking the questions to the champions here in the realm of the 2000s. All right. The 2000s. All right. Here we go, guys. In the film In Bruges, what Game of Thrones actor played the priest that was the target of Colin Farrell's hit? Five. Multiple choice. A, Charles Dance. B, Kieran Hines. C, Liam Cunningham. D, Julian Glover. Looking over that answer. Five, four. Karen Hines? Correct. That's correct. Matt Schrader himself. Yep. Matt right. Schrader himself. All right, question two. In Avatar, who plays head of security detail Colonel Miles Kortich? Five, four. Uh, repeat the question. In Avatar, who plays head of security detail Colonel Miles Kortich? Stephen Lang. Two points. Two points there. Pulling within one point, Christian. All right, there we go. Question three. In Hot Fuzz, what is the only word that the dim-witted lurch utters throughout the film? <laughs> Multiple choice. A, blarg. B, yarp. C, farp. D, narc. Thank you. Five. B. Correct. That's for correct. one boy. Ties up the game. Rory McCann. Ties up the game. So now we got question four. Question four. Here we go. From Yarp to the Hound. Okay, question four. In American Psycho, which actor plays Detective Donald Kimball, who is the man investigating Patrick Bateman? Willem Dafoe. Yep, Two my nemesis. Four. That is right. That's question four. That's question four. All right, question five. Question five. What was the name of Nicole Kidman's character in Moulin Rouge? Mm -hmm. Satine. Two points. Two points. Yep. Four point lead, yep. Christian. All right, here we go. Last question here. Last question. Who stars with Drew Barrymore as a couple trying to get rid of an elderly tenant in 2003's Duplex? Ben Stiller. Two points. Two All right. points. That's it. Keep it. The Shirewolves, Shirewolves have turned a deficit into a lead. It is now 26-20. The champions have a six-point lead. Betting round. And Clark will now spin that poor wheel. And so Clark's going to spin the wheel. And whatever it lands on, we get to the betting round. The betting round works like this. The champions will spin. Whatever category they get, They will have. The, both teams will have a chance to bet up to three. Zero to three points. They can bet. And now Clark will spin. Here we go. Wow. Jeez, that is something. <laughs> it is. Yeah. We have to keep using that wheel. OK, I'll to race my guy here. <laughs> so again, look, they were down. And now the champions have a nice, comfortable lead here. But we right. saw that happen go away pretty yeah. fast in the Inner Geekdom match. So this betting round could be everything. You got to play them all. Here we Nine go. Nine innings and four what quarters. We're moving over to, and we're landing on. Movie quotes. Movie quotes. Movie quotes. quotes. Very wow. interesting. All right. So now the, the teams are going to write down how many points they would like to wager. And we are going to then get to the actual question itself. Mm -hmm. All right. Which horror classic features the line, they're coming to get you, Barbara? All right. Wow. That was a lot of flurry at the table up there. Well, it makes anybody feel bit better. I wouldn't have gotten it. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know anything. Five. Uh, I would have been scared. Four, of the three, two, one. Critically claimed. How many points? Three. And you took Night of the Living Dead. Correct. That's and correct. We bet one. One point. And we said Night of the Living there Dead. You go. Right. Okay. Yeah. So they skipped. That's so, good. But they were, it was a okay, smart so choice though because look, they still have a four-point lead here. It's a four-point lead. They just went from six to four, but it's still four-point lead. And now we get into that speed round. The speed round, and here we go, the speed round. We are going to give the competitors five questions, Ken, five questions. They will buzz in. They will have two seconds to answer the question. If they get it right, they get a point. If they miss it, they lose a point with five questions. All right, so Ken, I will ask the five questions. Champions, are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Yep. You're not the champion yet? <laughs> That's Challenge sure. <laughs> sure. Challengers, are you ready? Yeah, we're All right. sure. Here we go. All right. Shot. Okay. <laughs> Question one. What is Jim Carrey's profession in 1997's Liar Liar? 
Willie. Lawyer. Yes. Correct. Question two. Reese Witherspoon, Josh Lucas, and Patrick Dempsey. Rachel. Sweet Home Alabama. Yes. <laughs> Name the movie that begins with the narrated line, people are always asking me if I know Tyler Durden. Rachel. Rachel. Fight Club. Yes. Fight Club. What action film franchise features the following characters? Luther, Benji, Julia. Rachel. Mission Impossible. Yes. <laughs> Six, Last, eight, one. One. Last one. In Disney's Frozen, who voices Anna? Beast. Oh, Beast. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, gone. Yeah, point, I point taken away. I didn't uh, hear right. you Point taken quiet. away, and that is uh, Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell was yeah, here. All right, so now the Shirewolves find themselves with a seven point lead going into the fifth and final round. All right, so the fifth and final round, and here we go. Fifth and final round. The competitors will get, the competitors will get three questions. They will choose from categories one to 20. First one will be worth two, second one three, third one five. They will decide who wants to take the two, who wants to take the three, and they can coordinate on the five pointer. All right, we are going to start with the champions who find themselves with a seven point lead here. Shire Wolves, three one. questions from <laughs> one to 20. Uh, four, eight, and 19. Four, four eight, eight, and 19. And, 19, and the challengers? Uh, five, six, and 10. Five, six, and 10 for the challengers. I will start with here. We will start with the two pointer for critically acclaimed. All right, number five. Here we go, guys. Number five. Steven Spielberg is the category. All right. All right. You'll, you'll take that? I'll take Spielberg. Whitney will take Spielberg. Okay. I apologize in advance. Whitney? <laughs> What 1989 Spielberg film stars Richard Dreyfuss as the ghost of a forest fire pilot watching his former girlfriend try to move on with her life after he tragically dies? Always. Two points. Correct. Two points. All right. Now the Beast. Now the Beast will have number six. Number six, Nicole Kidman. William, here we go. Okay. Who directed 2017's The Beguiled? Sophia Coppola. Yes. Correct. Nice. Three points. All right. Five. <laughs> your five pointer. No. Five pointer is from number 10. Now, if critically acclaimed hits it, it bounces back to the champions who have a chance to win. However, if they miss it, the Shire Wolves will win via TKO. And here is your category. It was number 10. You guys can collaborate. This is from 90s movies. Okay. Okay. 90s movies. Here we go. In Wayne's World. What is the name of Cassandra's band? You're right. Crucial Taunt. That is That's correct. <laughs> wow. All right. So now the Shire Wolves have a chance to win the game. Now the Shire Wolves have to hit, they, they just need to hit their three or their five, or excuse me, their two and their five, and here we, shit, they can just hit their five. All right. Here, here we go. Screwed. All right. Here we go. So, so, they, so uh, don't mess up, guys. Starting, starting with category four, Ken. Category four is 70s, 1970s, two-point question. Who directed? Oh, so who is taking it? Sorry. I'll take it. Uh, Rachel is taking the question. Who directed the Al Pacino crime classic Dog Day Afternoon? Sidney Lumet. Two that points. Is correct. Two All right. points there. So now Clark, Clark Wolf. Clark Wolf will have a chance here to win the game. If she hits this, it is over. If not, they will have a chance to hit the five pointer. Here we go. All right. All right. McConaughey. Your category. <laughs> all right. Your all right, category all right. is fantasy sci-fi. Oh, fantasy <laughs> sci-fi. Three-point question. Frank Oz provided the voice of the wise man in which 1986 fantasy movie? Labyrinth. And your winner Ooh. and Steel! Movie Trash Out Team Champion! Cassie! Clark Wolf! Rachel the Crusher pushing! The Shire Wolf! They did it, and what a fight by Critically Acclaimed, who found themselves in a big struggle, but man, did they fight!
fight back. Ten points in round number five. Hell of a match by critically acclaimed. 33 points. Hell yeah. of a battle there. The champions are still the champions. 35-33, Ken. And now they sit back and they wait to see. Will they be playing? Who's the boss again after that Chicago match? Will they play them again? Or will they be facing their former stablemate, Mark Andreco, as the odd couple and who's the boss? Go at it on April 13th, and you guys can still get those tickets. Go on over to the SchmodownLive.com to watch that number one contender match. But we know now whoever wins that Chicago match will be facing the, Chica the, Sh the Chicagoans. They'll be facing the Shire Wolves. So, Let's go and talk to Jen Sturger, who's with both the critically acclaimed and the Shire Wolves. Here we go. Thanks, Christian. A lot of growl growling going on back here. I know that was just not the way you guys thought that was going to pan out. And you guys had a great match. You were up the first round. I really think that steal in the second round hurts you. Well, and yeah. then the betting yeah. round, you kept it close. Yeah. And then the speed round happened, and it's like the wheels kind of fell off. Yeah, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little perturbed about the, the speed round. Uh, I'm going to have some, uh, some, some harsh words to say at our next uh, rules conference. I'm because, sure they'll be uh, screaming. Well, listen, I'll, I'll, I'm just going to say what happened. I'm just going to say what happened, mm -hmm. uh, for better or worse. Uh, I buzzed, and you have to wait for your name to be called, and I kept waiting, and then I heard what sounded like a kitten fart. And apparently that was them calling my name, and I was like, oh. That wasn't a kitten and then farting? I, yeah, I just, I miss her. I totally threw me off my game. I knew the answer. I was waiting to say the right answer. The, there needs to be some sort of decibel rule in the future. <laughs> I'm also I also a little bummed about the uh, question that we got wrong from Multiple Choice and John Carpenter, where we said the wrong words and they mm. didn't check to see which one we meant because we conflated two of them. That should also be a rules conference thing at some point. But listen, it happens. These things happen, Look, and the, the important thing is the question, we're never going to get any shirts. Why no? Why? That's the important <laughs> thing. <laughs> I've had a belt. Why no, cha our team why has no, no challenges shirts. though? Why no challenges? They're there for a reason. Crap. <laughs> Here's something else. I, I forgot you could do it for those reasons. I thought I had to, the question had to be wrong. Here's something I've learned. I have a slow reaction time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's difficult to hit those buttons on time. That's all. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something right now. Wendy and I, we've had a weird journey. We, we had all these stops and starts. Um, you know, we, yeah, we this is your actual first title match together, and which, I mean, when I thought about it, I was like, is it? It's like, remember, because remember, I feel like you guys have always been one of the top tier teams well, here. And so the fact it. that I... Re remember Jack and Jill when <laughs> Jill broke Al Pacino's Oscar and she's like, oh, I'm sorry, you have another one of those, right? And Al Pacino's like, you'd think so, but no. Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> that's how I feel uh, about the situation, but look. Look, it's a sad state if you have to compare our current state of affairs to the movie Jack and Jill. I chose my film carefully. I'm a professional critic. But, uh, listen... It's been a really great journey with you, Whitney, and it's gonna Darling. continue, and I wanna just keep playing matches with you. You're my ride or die. I hope you never betray me. I hope this isn't setting up some sort of ironic twist later, but for me, you know, we had a great match against the Shire Wolves. They won fair and square. They're awesome. They're the best in the league. For now, we're going to keep now. working at it. Look, we fought hard. Yes. That was that was a, a, oh, a, a bar brawl. I had to sleep last night. I was so worried. were lifted. Stools were mashed over people's heads. And we, we came out OK, I think. Bibs, did, Bibs, Bibs didn't even have a chair. I don't remember. But, the, yeah. <laughs> well, because it got smashed. Obviously, you know, this is not the end of Critically Acclaimed. Um, oh, God, I hope not. We have a podcast. You go, <laughs> you go back, you regroup. Uh, hopefully, you guys aren't tired of each other because uh, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of you this season. Oh, fingers crossed. Oh, we're, we're, we're coming back. And uh, let me tell you something. I don't know if it's allowed. I don't know what the rules are. But whoever loses that odd couple who's the boss match, uh, we're, we're, we might be coming for you if scheduling permits and if they let us. Well, we'll see. Still working on my smack talk. Yeah, fourth right there. Yeah. No growl, more tags, growl. guys. Growl, growl, no, growl. No more tags. Growl, growl, growl. growl Interview's growl. over. Just growl, growl. And we are back with the stool champions, <laughs> the Shire Wolves. Ladies, I mean, what an incredible match. You guys have now defended the titles twice. And, I mean, just walking you guys through that match, critically acclaimed, obviously, no slouches. Mm -hmm. The first round, you guys were actually down. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, 
I've watched you both progress so much as competitors that like you would have probably gotten in your heads previously, but like this is a whole new Shire Wolves. And I say that every time I see you guys play <laughs> together because your chemistry as a team just keeps growing and growing. You know, uh, second round, obviously that steal was huge. Yeah. Absolutely huge. How were you feeling when you made that pull? Oh, very good. Uh, oh, I was just talking to Rachel before we started rolling, and I knew where their minds were. I knew what they were trying to do because it's a famous bit of film history, but that E.T. and the thing came out the same year, and America collectively chose the friendly alien <laughs> and not the vicious, murderous right. alien. Who would Oh, yeah. So, but it also is a very p famous piece of trivia that two sci-fi classics, The Thing and Blade Runner, came out on the same day and both flopped at the time. So I knew where their head was at. But, I mean, I, I do appreciate what you said earlier about, like, the miss in round one, um, because I think that's something Rachel and I have talked about. Like, we, we really are working on not letting that stuff get to yeah. us. Uh, you have to play one question at a time. Yes. And if you miss something, we've both in the past let that bother us. Yep. And you, therefore, you're not concentrating on the next question. And maybe you miss that one. And then it, it snowballs. And you can get into your own head. And you know, both being up there side by side and talking those kinds of things through, we've both learned that you can't let that happen. Nope. Yeah. And you have to move on. And round three, obviously, Clark hits something that she, that she knows. And then yeah. speed round. Rachel. Rachel, you were on fire. She killed I think it. You're, it's your hands are burning. She was so I good. I figured it out. I don't know. Like I've, <laughs> I'm notoriously terrible at the speed round. Nope. But this time, just I don't know. And the speed round obviously didn't go Bibb's way, and that was, um, you know, that's one of those challenging moments where you're like, well, if you didn't agree with what was happening, speak up in the moment and don't wait until after the fact. You know. That's the other thing about this. The more you play, the more you realize that. Honestly, Bibiani probably knows more movie trivia than the rest of us. Like, I honestly think that he's a walking encyclopedia mm -hmm. with this stuff. But this game is a game. It's not just about the trivia. You can't get in your head. You have to know about your JTE rules. You have to know about your challenges. You have to know about your options. And, you know, I think if that had been us, so we would have challenged. challenged and that was, that was hopefully my, gotten a new question. I was sitting there going, nope, you challenge that. That is like, but, yes. this, is, but this is how, you know, I think that we... Uh, we are really trying to play the game. We're, That's something that you guys yeah. have totally, uh, I've, I've watched you grow. Because before, you both are obviously monsters with movie trivia, but the strategy has increased so much with how the two of you play the game that I mean that, that even when you aren't having your strongest day trivia-wise, that's just going to be something that people are going to come up against you guys and they just aren't gonna be prepared for. Yeah, we talk a lot about strategy. Yeah. We really do. We talk a lot about strategy going into the match, but also in between. During the match. Yeah. You, we talk between every round. Yep. I don't know if the cameras are on us, but we're always, what just happened? Okay, we're down by this, we're up by this. Where are we at? Where, How where's do we your feel? head? Where, like, we communicate and we figure it out as we go, but it's always as a team, and it's always knowing all the pieces of the game. Yep. It keep, you have to keep that in mind. So all your accolades aside, obviously, and you know, congratulations on today. Uh, we are still looking ahead, obviously, yep. to April Always. 13th yep. in Chicago, because that's obviously a big match coming up between Who's the Boss and The Odd Couple, your former teammate, mm -hmm. Mark Andreco, uh with the Fife Club. Now, I know it might, was it, would it be weird to have to face Mark? Or do you want to face Who's the Boss again? Like, I'm sure there's a lot of emotions We're going into this. We're big fans of Mark. Always. I mean, Five Club had uh, 2018. We will always have that. We will always, you know, be rooting for Mark, except when he plays us. But, <laughs> you know, it, it, that's a formidable team. And I honestly think that match in Chicago is going to be a barn burner. Yeah. We will be watching live from here, taking notes and doing uh, our due diligence. But we will be ready for either one of those teams. Um, but I have gone on record saying that um, I think rematches are fun. Um, I think beating Ben Bateman is fun. Um, we so, do it often. <laughs> yeah, we have done it before. So we'd be uh, eager to do it again. Absolutely. Well, congratulations again today, ladies, on another win. Uh, wow, 2019, maybe the next year for the Shire Wolves. <laughs> we'll have you. to see. Thank you. All right, like, as you see, as you see, look, obviously critically claimed a little bummed out there too. William didn't think that it, his, like, didn't, he didn't hear, didn't I, hear you me. know, he, he might have a case. He didn't hear me say beast. I, 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 understand, I understand that uh, way, he might have me in court. I, I get it. Well, either way, it, it's like, it comes down to the fact that the Shire Wolves played 
really, really strong. They found themselves down. They came back. The John Carpenter hurt the critically acclaimed for sure. But and it's a tough loss. William Bibiani is one of the most passionate people that we have in this league. He's the managing editor of trivia, mm -hmm. uh, of triviasd.com. He cares about this league. He really wants to. So you understand why he was bumped. But then you hear the Shire Wolves. These women right now, Rachel Cushing already is making a play for player of the year. I mean, she's already, it's, it's, we're, we're a month and a half into it. The teams of the Shirewolf already coming back in two, they have six straight victories, two title defenses, and now they stare down that potential winner in Chicago. That's going to be a fight. You know, we haven't built a physical Hall of Fame yet for the Schmodown, but there's going to be an entire wing to the Shire Wolves. You're just going to have to enter and look at all their accomplishments because this was impressive. But 33 points in a losing effort for critically yeah. played. It, it, no one's going to write off this team as the battle for the titles will obviously go on. Yeah, it's going to be tough. So, um, look, and, and they, they really made no... When Jen asked them about who they wanted to see, mm. they both said it would be fun to see Andrako. But they, they and Rachel said it before on Schmodown Rundown, and she said it again too. They want to they want to take out who's the boss again, and they know who's the boss wants to take them out. So it's going to that real rivalry sitting there. But Odd Couple's not going to let that happen, and I know Roxy Stryer has other words about it too. So we are very excited here. What a battle between a great championship match between critically acclaimed, who has absolutely no, they should not hang their head uh, low at all because that was an absolutely great performance from them. They came back after being down seven and now we still have the champions clark wolf rachel cushing guys go on over to triviasd.com check out articles every day over there make sure you join the patreon you can download episodes of this show on audio go to apple Podcasts. go to spotify it helps tremendously you're not part of the patron you can't be part of the patron well do us a favor and go download because guess what it's free go and listen test yourself try to get new people involved by just hey can you get this right? Wait, what's that show you're listening to? Audio works. Do it. Right, Ken? Audio does work. I'm a fan of audio. That's why I love headphones, Christian. But more than anything, I love the movie trivia showdown. And thank you for all your support. Spread the word like he said. All right, guys. So thank you. And once again, we're going to be in your city sooner or later. So go on and get those tickets to SchmodownLive.com. You want to check out the free-for-all. That is March 23rd, L.A. Come and check us out. 40 competitors going for the grand prize of any title that they want. Last person standing. Just mentioned the April 13th Chicago match. Not only who's the boss for us, odd couple. Mr. Alex Damon, Star Wars, explained himself, puts his title on the line, and it goes down during Star Wars celebration. And finally, May 18th in Houston at the Booker T Arena, we are going to have the battle of action continue. Andrew Guy, Ben Bateman in the main event going head-to-head -head with a stipulation that if Ben Bateman loses, he does not get into the ultimate showdown singles tournament and if andrew guy loses then bateman gets to pick andrew guy's next singles match all right so with that that's the pit boss ken knapsack watch inside showdown every monday i'm christian harloff and we will see you next time oh come in John. oh what's up dan how are you, Sorry, how are you? How are you? See you man I want to talk to you for a minute if you guys have got time for you, brother. Oh, how you doing? How you been? Doing good. I'm feeling great. Our horsemen are doing well. Riley's doing good. You're a three-time champion. We're feeling our mojo again as a tag team. It's a good year for the horsemen. We're having a great year. And that's something I just want to throw by you. Okay. I've been doing some thinking. You're right. Horsemen are doing great. Yeah. Thinking about some ideas, ways that we can court, sort of, sort of, you know, shake things up, do something different. Okay. We need a couple new members. We do. So oh, you got somebody in mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do actually. Um, I had a couple, couple thoughts. Okay. Um, I was talking to Riley. Right. And Love that guy. I was thinking about Bateman. First, Riley. Now you. Why are we talking about Bateman in this room? I know. I know. I get it. I get it, John. But just, just hear me out. All right. He's having a good year. Horsemen are having a good year. He and Riley, they're a good team. They already played for one team's title. Yeah. Maybe they're going to play for another. If they win that, that's two more belts in the Horsemen. That means if I got the singles belt or you got the singles belt and they got a belt, that's three belts for the four of us, John. And he's saying, uh, oh, and I'm reformed. And I know you can't trust him. I can't trust no. him either. If he's lying, we kick his ass out of here, John. He's gone. And then it's me, you, and Riley. We're right back to where we started. But he's got no Riley, he's got no us, he's got no guy, he's going to be alone, he's going to be crippled. Plus, John, and this is a big personal thing for me, if Ben Bateman joins the Horsemen, that is going to drive Andrew Guy crazy. Damn, Dan, this is a new side of you. 
They call you dangerous. This is more vicious, Dan Merle. I haven't seen this color on you ever. We've been playing each other a lot of years. Yeah. I like the game, but I like to strategize too. I'm not telling you what to do. I know there's a lot of history. Just think about it. That's all I'm saying. What's up, Schmodown fans? Frank here, and it is time for your Schmodown Breakdown. And to start this match, critically acclaimed enters as the 12th team to compete for the team title, and they are doing so against the Shire Wolves, who boast an accuracy rate of 83%. Critically acclaimed themselves have a rate of 79%. Now, after one round of play, the challengers have a two point lead over the defending champs. Both Viviani and Cushing went nine for nine for the perfect round. And with that perfect round for Rachel Cushing, she is now the only player in Schmodown history to have earned a perfect first round in each of the three divisions. And with Clark Wolf, a historic streak comes to an end. By scoring five points in the first, she snaps a 10-game streak in which she has scored six or more points in the first round. It's the longest streak of all time in the division. Getting into round two, critically acclaimed scores only four points, answering two of their six questions. It's the fewest points scored in the second round by a team in a title match. They also surrendered a two-point steal to the Shire Wolves. As for the Shire Wolves, they earned 10 points going 6-for-6 six six in the 2000s category. This is the third straight match they have gone 6-for-6, six six, and they have earned 32 out of a possible 36 points in that span. Going into the wager round, the Shire Wolves are up by 6 points, 26-20. to 20. In the third round, critically acclaimed was able to cut into the deficit, trimming it by two points, heading into that speed round. However, coming out of the speed round, they found themselves down by seven points after Rachel Cushing went three for three and William Bibiani went one of two, effectively earning zero points for the round. Now in the final round, critically acclaimed would go three for three for the full 10 points to force it back to the Shire Wolves. And coming into the match, the Shire Wolves were a perfect six for six in final round questions, and they would make it eight for eight by the end of the match. And in the process, successfully defend their title with a final score of 35 to 33. Going inside the numbers, critically acclaimed played a very solid game, going 23 of 29 for an accuracy rate of 79%. After today's match, critically acclaimed hold the fourth best accuracy rate in the division. Looking at the defending champions, the Shire Wolves went 27 of 33 for an accuracy rate of 82%. In their six matches thus far, this is nearly their fourth best performance to date. The Shire Wolves have answered 80% or better in five of their six matches. And when it comes to crunch time between the speed round and the final rounds in their three title matches, the Shire Wolves have answered a combined 13 of 13 questions. If you want to find out all the stats about this match and from around the league, check out SD Rundown Stats on Twitter. And don't forget to check out the Schmodown Rundown every weekend right here on the Movie Trivia Schmodown channel on YouTube and also on the Schmodown podcast feed. This has been your Schmodown Breakdown.